Hi there, I'm Chris Saxon, the SQL Wizard. In the previous episode, we took a look at two approaches for finding all the red sweets out of the party bags I prepared. We looked at a full table scan and an index range scan and compared the two approaches. We found that the full table scan was more efficient, roughly speaking, when we were fetching more candies than we had bags. However, when I did this analysis, I made a really big assumption about how the sweets were listed in the document relative to how they were actually stored in the table. And we'll take a look at that assumption in this episode. With that in mind, let's get started. In the previous episode, when I was fetching all the red sweets out of the bags here, using my document, each new entry in my document meant I had to pick up a new bag. So if I was getting the red candies, my first one would be in bag 11, pick that up. Next one, that would be in bag nine, go to bag nine, pick that up. Next one, bag eight, I have to go to bag eight, pick that up. So every time I was looking at a new entry in my document, I'd have to pick up a different bag. What happens this time? Go to the start of the red entries in my document here, find that's in bag 11. So we go to bag 11 and pick it up. Next entry, that's also in bag 11. So I can keep bag 11 in my hand. Next one, that's also in bag 11. So I can still keep it in my hand. And in fact, bag 11 contains just red sweets. There are no other colors in here. And the first half of my red entries are all in bag 11. Once I've read all of those, I go on to the next one. That's in bag 12. So I can go to bag 12, pick that up. And this also only contains red sweets. And that's the rest of the red entries in my document here. And in fact, the order that the sweets are listed in my document here exactly matches the order I've stored them in these bags. So for example, these first two bags only contain blue sweets. These next two ones, only brown and so on. So we've got those last two bags, which only contain yellow candy. So what are the efficiency implications of this? How does the physical order affect the performance of using my document here? Well, there's two important things to notice. Firstly, instead of having to access every single bag in my table here, I'm only having to pick up two, bag 11 and bag 12. So I no longer need to visit every single one. Second key thing to notice is, because I'm reading the entries out of my document here and the first half are all in bag 11, I don't need to pick up the bag again multiple times. I only need to do two bag pickup operations. I'm only picking up bags twice, whereas previously, where the entries in the document were completely random relative to how the sweets are stored in the bags, I was having to visit each bag three or four times. So this is a substantial reduction in the amount of work. We've gone from a situation where the index range scan was way more expensive than the full table scan to a situation where it's potentially far more efficient. Oracle tracks how well the order entries are in an index relative to how they're physically stored in the table via the clustering factor. This is a numeric value with a lower bound of the number of blocks in the table and an upper bound of the number of rows stored in the table. The lower the number, the better clustered the data is. So in my example here, our lower bound is 16 and the upper bound is three or 400, however many candies I actually have. And in this video, the clustering factor would be 16. That's because the order of the entries in my document here exactly matches the order the rows are stored in the table. However, in the previous episode, where there was no correlation between the document and the physical storage, the clustering factor would have been really high, three or 400. Now, at this point, you may be saying to yourself, well, given that 
well-clustered data makes such a big difference to query performance, are there any ways I can ensure that the physical order of data matches the order of entries in a corresponding index? The answer is, yes, there is. One of the ways you can do that is using an index organized table. Using this, Oracle physically stores the data in the same order as the primary key index. To see why? Let's compare it to a standard heap table. In this, we've got the data stored in the table and the primary key values stored in a corresponding index. An index organized table combines those two data structures into one. Therefore, your table is an index. And th this means it's going to be sorted by whatever the primary key is. You may now be saying to yourself, great, I can just convert my tables to be index organized and get significant query improvements when searching by primary key. Before you do so, however, just hold on a second. There's an important point to consider. In general, it's rare that all the columns in a table are perfectly correlated. So sorting for, by one column or one set of columns means that they're disordered by the other columns. For example, with my candies here, if I order them by color, it's very likely that they're disordered by weight. Similarly, if I order them by weight, very likely that they're randomly ordered by color. So optimizing the clustering factor for one column or one set of columns almost always comes at the cost of other columns in the same table. Let's recap. We can see that the efficiency of an index depends not just on how many rows you're fetching from the table, but how many blocks those rows are spread over. The more blocks they're spread over, the less efficient the index is gonna be. However, if those rows are tightly packed in a few blocks in the table with a physical order that closely matches the order of entries in the corresponding index, the clustering factor is gonna be low and the index is gonna be nice and efficient to use. Reordering your physical data to optimize the clustering factor, something that sounds good in theory, but in practice, it's just infeasible to do. If you've got a large production system with big volumes of data, physically reordering that data will take a long time. That said, there are data structures you can use to force the physical order of data. One of these is an index organized table. This sorts data by the primary key. And so queries using the primary key are gonna be nice and efficient. However, this comes at the cost of queries against other columns in the same table. So to determine whether an index organized table is appropriate or not, you need to do some cost benefit analysis to see whether it improves system performance overall. I'm Chris Saxon, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Saxon, the SQL Wizard. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get future updates on more SQL magic. I'll see you next time.